Hey everybody, this is Avery, and today we're going to be talking about how a computer can draw a straight line onto the screen. So, I guess, just getting started, as you can imagine, this grid right here can be all the pixels on your screen, or in a window, and say you want to change one of the colors to the pixel, this is one dot, and then say you have another dot right here. Um, if you want to draw a line in between these two dots, you'd have to calculate the slope based on the two dots, and be able to... Uh, iterate through every single one of the X's or Y's on the axis, axis to figure out what to draw. We can clearly see that it would just increment by one until it reaches this one up here and that fills in the whole entire line. And this is how a computer is able to not just draw the pixels but it's able to combine all the pixels to create all the shapes that are on the computer. Usually most things on the computer are rectangles because those are the nicer things to draw as in like you know this right here looks much smoother than a little rigid circle. I mean, that's not the greatest, but uh, we're going to be talking about how the computer can make sure that the lines are always as smooth as possible, at least for a straight line. And right here in Desmos, uh, just you know the graph, we can look at how a line is formed, and this is something you just learn in, I don't know, middle school or something, where y equals mx plus b, and m is going to be the slope, and b is the offset. So let's say this grid, just like this one, is the screen, and we have a point right here and over here, we're trying to calculate the distance between those. To be able to do that, we have to iterate from every single one of these x's all the way from here to over here, and we have to calculate the slopes from it, and then when we're going through every x, we need to figure out using the x and using the slope and also the offset as well. Uh, where to draw every single one of these pixels in between the two. So we can get something just like this. And here in this code, which I'll have in the description, as I almost always do, uh, it's using STL2. Um, the code is... Almost everything works in C, basically, but there is some stuff that I think is in C++. But uh, you can follow along for any language. Everything's pretty simple. And we can see... Here we can just draw two points, and the points are going to be they're little pixels. You probably can't even see them. There's one right there in the middle. That's the point that I have called the anchor point, and then there's one which you definitely can't see. It's the mouse. Uh, yeah, there's no. I mean, I can see it, but I don't think you guys can see it. There's a little dot that's dragging along with the mouse. So we want to make a line that can be in the anchor, the middle, and to the mouse. So that way we can check uh, the line in all different positions. Sorry, right here slope line is going to be doing exactly like this, just y equals mx plus b. Um, you can see right here, slope line is this function right here, uh, where it takes in the two points. Most of the other functions are going to be taking in the, um, the actual coordinates, but this is just taking in two points. It's the same thing, just two different coordinates. And say we want to draw it this way, it's going to be drawing from right, I mean from left to right. But in case this coordinate happens to be over here, we're going to draw from right to left. But instead of drawing from right to left, we're just going to take this coordinate and this coordinate and we're just going to flip them. So right here we're seeing which coordinate is in which order. And if it needs to be flipped, then it flips it. So the first one is the start, the last one's the end. But in case the end one is, uh, in case it needs to be flipped and they flip, and then we calculate the slope, and the slope's just calculated right up here, where it does the y2, the greater one, minus the y1, over x2, the x1, and in case you don't want to divide by zero, so in case that would divide by zero, it just gives the top, so you don't need to divide by anything, and that's just going to give you the slope. And from there, we can actually draw the line, we just iterate, like I mentioned, every single one of these pixels, we check this one, and then this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. And we just do the math based on the slope and based on the x to figure out where it would be on the y. And by doing so, make sure this is make sure it's saved. Recompile it. By doing so, we can see we have a line that's being drawn exactly like we have. So for every single one of these x's, it checks it and it generates the slope, and then it knows to keep going along and along. But because it's only drawing one pixel per x, 
what's a uh, have a hypothetical where we have this line it's able to draw all the way up there but let's say that this one's right here it knows to check here and then it moves on to the next X it knows it will be somewhere up here say it draws here but then it moves on to the next X and it sees this is the final point so this is going to be the line right there it's not going to know to draw anything more and we can see that by this right here there's a uh, big gaps in between every single one of them and it's gonna be the same thing down here and depending on if you're drawing it on the X or based on if you're uh, iterating it on the Y's it could do the same things on the X axis but because we're doing it on the X's the Y's are the ones that uh, end up like that so how we're gonna fix something like that there are a bunch of different algorithms that uh, do the exact that are for that exact same problem one of them a uh, popular one is called DDA or the digital differential Ana analyzer analyzer my bad and the DDA basically has these deltas to figure out this is similar to what we did with the slopes but it's also figuring out how many steps it's going to need to be um, it has the absolute just to make sure it's positive and it has the increment uh, increments so it knows maybe this one needs this many steps and this one needs that many steps for every increment and it's just able to loop through it and it knows to grow it by those increments and we can I bet, yeah okay just double checking we can fill this one more time and as we can see now it knows the length that it should be to fill in everything and it fills them in so that's a great start to be able to see how the lines we filled in and as we can see not every line is going to be straight like this if there was a line that's right here it, it's able to calculate how to fill it in and it's not really jagged like it's not it's going to fill in like something like this and then there's just one or I guess the GIMP does it itself already but there's not going to be anything like this it's going to make sure that it's straight just like you can see in GIMP it's going to kind of parse it out where this one has two and then this one over here is two and it kind of looks it more it looks more smooth this way um there's kind of a lot of code so i'm not going to go over every single line i'll have everything in the description but uh the next one is the brahesnium line algorithm this one runs a little bit faster than the digital differential one and we can see this one right up here uh so this one's a little bit more complicated even though it runs a little faster everything it's using for this is just integers where it's also finding the slopes for everything or the deltas and using that to find the slopes but we're going to want to check if the slope is going to be positive or negative uh, kind of what we did with the original one where we just want to see if it's uh what direction we should draw it in but we're checking that for like the x's and the y's and then it's kind of moving around everything to make sure that it's all in the same order and then uh, it kind of has a similar method where it knows where to draw the gaps and but it's just done a little bit differently but to make sure that like I said it needs to make sure that it knows where to draw them so the points up here I could easily draw it but the points over here needs to know that this one's gonna be negative or it's down here the same thing uh, so that's kind of what all these if things are for uh, ifs and else it's kind of checking like uh, this one's greater than zero uh, this one right here is x is greater than zero and then that right here it's checking for every single quadrant based on the first point being the middle and we can see this in action it's uh basically gonna look the exact same except for um there's not really too much that you can tell but it, it runs a little bit better but uh, as you can see it does the same thing the lines look pretty smooth well uh, they look smoother at least but that's gonna be the next thing we're gonna talk about as you can see it's kind of it's easier to see right here but say we fill in a line even though this isn't what I was saying it's not uh, it's not like something like this or, no, that's a bad example Even though I was saying, like, let's get rid of this. Say, points up here. You know, it's not uh, 
uh, so it's not something like that. It's still it's a lot more straight than it could it than it could be. But even then, we kind of want to make it a little a little bit smoother. And to use that, we use something called anti-aliasing, where it takes in the same things. It knows exactly where everything is, but it shades them based on their edges. So uh, it is not blending. It's different than blending. Blending would take this color and this color and decide to have a color in between it. Anti-aliasing sees the difference between this block and this pixel, and it knows that it's moved this mount, it's moved up a single block or single pixel, and it knows because of that it's able to calculate which color should go here. And it's kind of, I mean, I can kind of draw it, but like, it kind of fills in this and like has different shades based on the amount. So this one has two right here, and that one has two, and this one's two as well. So it kind of does something like that where it fills in the shades. Um, I'm sure I can Google something that looks a little bit better. So here's an example um, where this one's really rigid. This anti-aliasing kind of fills in a little bit more colors. And this is zoomed up, but as you can see, you can kind of tell this one's rigid, but this one right here is a lot more smooth. So we're going to look at a function that can do that as well. And it's not the greatest, but it's kind of an example. Uh, this one is called the, I guess it's named after this guy, I don't know how to say this, the Xilion the Wu um, algorithm. And this one has, this one's kind of built with anti-aliasing in mind. And it's kind of a lot to it, but we're trying to see how, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, we're seeing like how steep it is like so this one needs to go up here but this one has a jump up here kind of up there so it works the same way that way but then it also has this function right here is going to be the number um, we use the intersect the same thing we had in the last one sort of to see the, the steepness and uses the steepness to also decide the color and so here's one for the side and the color and this is another one and here's this one right here uh, so this one is just makes it go down a little bit and then this one can make you go up a little bit uh, the shading and so it kind of just makes it so like some of the colors are darker and some of them are lighter based on uh, the steepness of it and that kind of just makes it anti alias uh, it's not it could be there's more to it this is kind of just the basics of how it works as you can see, as we spin it, moving at different angles, there's going to be kind of, I, mean, I guess I can't point at it because it's using the mouse, but it kind of gets thicker at certain parts. Like uh, right here, it doesn't need to be thick because it's kind of just a straight line. But right over here, it, there's a lot more steepness and it's a lot more rigid. So it's able to actually check like how steep it is and based on how steep it is, it knows that it should fill in a few more colors and change the colors a little bit. And it's kind of just like this. Um, there's still more ways to smooth it out by smoothing it out with more colors, uh, checking for more things. But this is kind of just the basics of how your computer can draw a line onto the screen. Uh, lines are almost used for any shape, uh, basically anything out there. I mean, it could be at least. But uh, hopefully, this video is useful. Um, if you guys want to look through the code yourself, uh, feel free to check it out. I know maybe not everyone is going to be using drawing their own lines because a lot of any sort of graphics things you use does more than draw pixels. It can draw the lines for you. But in case you just want to learn about it, that's what this video is for. Or in case you just want to build something similar to that, like say you want to work on something like SDL2 or anything else like that, this is kind of just what you need to know to be able to draw a line. I would suggest either getting a more improved um, anti-aliased one or just using the Bresnum line algorithm if you were to use one for yourself. But this is kind of just the basics. Uh, once again, thanks again for watching everybody and see you guys again next time.